Hey guys, just doing a quick video on how to rebuild uh, brushless motors. They're pretty much all the same in the RC world, um, and even out of the RC world, brushless motors for different things are they're all the same. Uh, how how they're uh, how they work. So this one's a Castle 2400 kV motor. Um, it's a 550 size can, uh, but it's an extra long. Uh, the length is uh, extra long. Uh, longer than a regular 550 size and uh, so to start you'll just need an allen driver uh, a 2.5 millimeter to be exact for the castle motor for uh, most of these castle motors they have three uh, screws on the face plate they only need to take off I've already taken two of mine out so just take this one out and then this face plate will instantly become loose and it'll just rotate on the shaft so just take that off and that has the bearing in it. And then there'll be a brass spacer you just need to take off. And you want to make sure to take that off before uh, you take the motor shaft out, which you'll also need uh, pliers for this too. Um, you just want to pull hard, but also slowly to take this out. Because if you just pull it uh, too too fast, um, when it breaks loose of the magnetism of the motor, um, it will just fly out of the pliers and go across the room. As uh, that's happened to me before, back when uh, I was a super noob at this. And there is a spacer that should be on the back of that, but it fell off on the motor. So sometimes it'll happen. So you just gotta uh, tilt the motor to pour it out, let it uh, slide out, and so that just goes on the back like so. So now to clean it out, you can do what I do and just use like wet paper towels uh, and just make sure to get all the dust and dirt out of there. Um, some people use a motor, motor cleaner, which I've never bought it before, so I don't know how it works. I'm guessing it, it works well, obviously. Um, but you can also do that. Um, now, you can also take off this back plate, which there's three 1.5 millimeter screws to take that out. Two of mine are stripped as they strip really easy so I won't be able to show you guys uh, how to take that up how to take this off um, I could drummel the screws but there's really no point as I don't need to take the back off um, but pretty much to take it off you just um, it can be a pain sometimes so obviously you want to take those screws out and then you can use a knife and get try to get inside that ridge and slowly pry it off uh, just go around the whole motor and try to pry it off or you can just stick a screwdriver or Allen driver down the uh, center of the motor so it hits that back plate and then using even just pliers or a hammer a small hammer just hit the top of that screwdriver or Allen uh, Allen driver um, and it'll knock out that that bottom plate I've done that before too so and then also just a note when you put the shaft back in the mo um, the the motor shaft it has this back spa spacer, obviously, and that will just fall off and not line up right if you try to put it in, you know, the regular way. So what you want to do is just put it in upside down because the motor will just suck this right in. Um, so when you do that, it's, you know, it's in there, it's set, it's all, it's all good. So then you just want to put that, the top spacer on. Make sure to put this on the right way. Um, obviously, that's the wrong way and uh, tighten the screws back up and then you're, you're all ready to go and you should have a fresh motor. And then if you need to replace those, the bearings in the motor, which is a common cause for uh, rebuilding, um, you do want to take that back plate off because that's really the only way to get out that bearing. You can't really get it out from the top of the motor. Um, it's pretty impossible. And then to get out of the, the face plate, you just want to knock it out from the top using uh, just like an allen driver just getting on the edge if it knocks out that easy or you can use uh, a wheel nut uh, wrench and using one of like one of the smaller sizes you can usually it usually fits the hole perfect and just uh, makes contact with the top of the bearing so then it's uh, so then it's even pressure all around the bearing and if you wanted to use the bearing for something else if it wasn't totally shot then it would uh, be easier on the bearing to take it out this way. 
And then you, you would just want to either clamp this to something, to the side or something where the bearings, the, uh, the bearing part is hanging off the table or workbench or whatever you clamp it to. So then you can knock it out. Or if you have, say, two tables or um, something where you can place it down and there's a gap in the middle so the bearing will knock out, you can do that too. So that's pretty much it. Subscribe for more. Have a good one.